Welcome to Women's Footy. Thanks to Nav. My name's Bryony Dawson and we're here in our final episode for this season and I'm very happy to introduce my co-host for today, Collingwood superstar Ruby Slyter. Rubes, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. The finale as well. Yeah, absolute pleasure to have you. Now, it has been a pretty big week in footy, but not for Collingwood, unfortunately. Had your final postponed. Unprecedented times. Yes, yeah, pretty crazy one for us, sort of trying to figure out uh, when we're playing. So, um, I mean, we don't know any more than the public at this stage, but hopefully find out tomorrow what our week looks like. Excellent. Hopefully we'll get some clarity on that soon. You guys can check us out on our socials, Instagram and Twitter at Women's Footy AFL. Well, let's check out a few of the results from yesterday's final. North um, North just got totally overrun by the Dockers yesterday. Um, what were your thoughts on that game, Rubes? It was a great game in the way of just the scoring fiesta and really high pressure. So um, really exciting to watch. And we knew it was going to be. They're two really strong teams, two of the best teams in the comp this yeah. season. Um, but Frio just too good. They were absolute superstars in the end there. Let's get stuck into our news headlines for Nilex. Experts in watering. Well, we just talked about it then. Frio absolutely run north to secure a preliminary final against the Crows. It was an absolutely huge game there. Um, sort of close in the beginning. North started really well, but the Dockers just too strong in the end. Yeah, they were. They um, Freo are just such a great team, and when they get momentum, they really know how to hold it, which is something that North probably struggle with um, a little bit, particularly in finals games. You saw it last year um, in the semi against Collingwood, um, and again this year they just couldn't stop Freo's run. And Freo just so efficient with the ball as well. Second half, uh, kicking six goals to one. Uh, well, that's it, just taking advantage of their opportunities and um, something North lacked yesterday was just that poise in front of goal. So they'd be really disappointed in that and I'm sure Captain Emma Carney would have a few things to say about it. But, you know, they've, they've put out a great season. They certainly have. Uh, and Captain Hayley Miller was inspirational as well with 21 disposals and one goal. And Miller also had six inside 50s and that's what you really want your captain to step up and do in a final, isn't it? She's just a jet. She, honestly, I was watching that game and just blown away by her, by her power out of the stoppage and it was really evident. She made the North people around her look really slow on their feet, which they're not. They're fast players, but she's just a cut above. She's, a, she's an absolute gun. When we were talking about her before, you were just like, oh, just love her. Yeah, and when you've got your captain putting that out in a semi-final, it's pretty hard not to be pumped up if you're the players around her. Yeah, it's beautiful footage to watch here as well. Well, we also had 2021 league best and fairest. Kiara Bowers was dominant in her return after suspension as well. Three tackles, 21 disposals. It was an absolutely solid effort from her. Yeah, quiet first quarter, but we won't hold that against her. Zero possessions in the first quarter. Yeah, which zero. I don't know if that's ever happened to Turbo, <laughs> but um, oh, she's just so good. And she, again, another driver for those girls with her physicality, a, a less tackling game on her behalf, uh, on her behalf for what she's generally known for. But, um, you know, you can't fault her efforts and she's just so good for them. You see her there streaming out of the midfield, what she does so often. Yeah, she's an absolute superstar. Although, arguably, the player who set up the win for the Dockers was live wire Gabby O'Sullivan, who was tremendous with 18 disposals and a goal, constantly uh, a thorn in that north back line. Yeah, another one. They're just so fit, Frio, and it's something that I really notice when I come up against them is they, I think they're the fittest team in the comp and, uh, you know, players like Gabby O'Sullivan, who I was lucky to play with at East Frio, another one that I came through the rank ranks with and, yeah. um, again, a real spark for that team and a bit of a barometer for them when she's up and about, they're up and about. Yeah, she absolutely... The, the run through the ball was just absolutely fantastic. All right, and for North, it was another great uh, uh, regular season for them, but just weren't able to, to, you know, get a win in the final. And what do they need to do, Rubes, to really start to crack and beat those um, top six teams? I spoke about momentum earlier and how great Frio are at holding their momentum. And um, I think that's something they need to work on is getting each other into the game. They've got so many guns across the field and, um, you know, they were... In trouble yesterday with Kim Rennie, their ruck going down and, you know, losing their tall forward pillar, Emma King, and yep. her having to slot in and be a full-time ruck for them, which, you know, puts all the pressure on Talia Randall to be that tall forward. Um, but when you've got a really... Up against a really strong midfield like Frio, um, you need, you know, as much, you know... 
power in the midfield to then shift into the forward line. Um, but, yeah, they just are missing that bringing each other into the game, I think. And do you think if they bring that in next season that that's going to be the difference where they can start beating those top teams? Definitely, because they're such a well-oiled squad and, you know, what they individually put out there is so good. So if they learn to sort of be working together, that slight more light Frio do bring each other into the game, I their football's as good as anyone's. Yeah, and I just felt like they weren't really capitalising on their opportunities as well, that first quarter, first half even. They just really missed a lot of opportunities. Well, that's it. I think they had three more inside 50s than Frio, but just, you know, didn't capitalise, which, um, you know, they'd be really disappointed in. But, look, they're a great team and you can't fault their efforts, but it was a pretty disappointing game for them. Yeah, I mean, this is this is like some real dominant uh, possessions there and to, to not end up in the lead and, and dominating on the scoreboard as well could, would be pretty disappointing. Yeah, definitely. I think something that was really evident in their game was, you know, Freer are a very high-pressure side and they make you feel like you do not have a second with the football and you could really see North overusing their hands and just transferring the pressure to each other rather than yeah. trying to help each other out and find an open one to get it forward. Um, it was like they were never fully settled. Yeah. But a bright spark for North was Nicole Bresnahan. She had 15 disposals, equaling a season high. I thought she was absolutely fantastic yesterday. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I know firsthand how hard those Frio forwards are to cover. Um, and the ball coming in there is just so hot. So, um, you know, for a defender to step up in a game like that, it's, it's, it is a shining light for North. And another shining light for North was this absolutely freaky goal coming up from Ellie Gavalis. She really, it was the first goal. She just had an absolute snap from the boundary. Great hands here. And then, boom, has a look at it. Straight through. Everyone was pretty excited about yeah, that. Yeah, you'd be pretty happy with that, particularly in a semi-final. Do they, do they count that for goal of the year for the W Awards, do you think, or are they only in the home and away season? Because you would think that would be up there if it is counted. It's a great snag. Our producer did say it might have been up there for goal of the year. Yeah. We hadn't already picked it yeah. uh, <laughs> for today's show. So it was a pretty fantastic there. Well, coming up after the break is Natalie Wood is the inaugural AFLW coach. Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB, who are giving away $10,000 to a local footy club. Simply scan the QR code on screen or visit nab.com.au slash footy is back to enter. Well, I want to welcome an absolute legend in footy, Gemma Bastiani. How are you, Jim? Hey, Bryony. Thanks for having me. I am very excited to have you on here, mate. Uh, I want to first talk about the end of the season. Comes a flurry of different awards, such as All-Australian, Coaches Award, Best and Fairest and that kind of thing. We've actually put together uh, our own All-Australian team based on our champion data stats. Let's take a look at this. How are you feeling about this team, Gemma? Yeah, there's some incredible players in that side. Probably not the team I would choose at the end of the year, Ooh, um, but statistically, definitely stands up. <laughs> what changes would you make on there, Jim? I think a big glaring omission in this one is uh, Lauren Pierce in the ruck. Mm -hmm. um, Lauren Pierce is one of the best rucks we've ever seen in the AFLW, and she's the only player in, in the competition to ever have 20 disposals and 20 hitouts in a game, and she's done it twice, and once of those was this year. So, yeah, I think Lauren Pierce has got to get the first call up in that rough position for sure. Interesting. Very interesting. OK, so um, one award has actually already been awarded this year. Brisbane, uh, Emily Bates was awarded the AFL Coaches Association, AFLW Player of the Year. Ruby, Gems, uh, how have you seen her season? Oh, she's just a star, isn't she? And she's taken captaincy in a full stride and really thriving off of it, driving those Brisbane girls. Um, yeah, there's no secret she's been an absolute star this year. What about you, Gems? Yeah, she's talked about the work she's done in the off-season to get her body in better shape, to get fitness up, but it's the other things that she's doing really well. So she's always been a great midfielder, but she's taken the step up where she's, you know, averaging 5.6 clearances a game and getting the ball forward, has kicked three goals. It's those little things that she's added to a really solid base that's made her that much better. 
And who do you think should be up for the big one, the best and fairest, Jim? It's hard to go past Emily Bates. I would absolutely back her in. Another one that I think deserves to be right up there is Hayley Miller. Um, you spoke earlier about how incredible she's been and she's she's been such a reliable player even when her team hasn't been up and about. She's still done an immense amount of work. So, yeah, Hayley Miller would be the other one for me. Fantastic. And with the season over, we thought it might be a good idea to have a look at some of the most underrated players uh, in the competition. Uh, St Kilda's Tilly Lucas Rod is one of them. She averaged 20 disposals a game, an absolute legend, and also seven tackles a game. Yeah, the big thing about Tilly is she was tasked with going into the midfield about a month before the home and away season began, and she just took it in stride did her job and while they are missing some of that class that you know Tiana Smith and Patrikios can bring Tilly Lucas Rod really brought the grunt for them and um it recently she against Geelong actually she equaled the second highest ever clearances in an AFLW match so she's doing her job and has done it every single week this year Another underrated player of the competition, Anya Tyke, who has been a real pillar in defence for Frio this year and even hit the scoreboard yesterday. What have you loved about her game? Anya is the definition of a utility. She's been sitting on the sidelines for two years, wanting to get on the park to show what she can do. And I think Frio wanted to get her out there so they could show, yeah, we've invested in this person because they are incredible. Um, a couple of moments yesterday that really showed off what she can do was her centering kicks inside 50. She set up teammates incredibly well because of her vision, her ability to gather the ball at ground level and then centre it in front of goal for a teammate. And those things are so valuable in AFLW, the ability to see what's happening in front of you. And she does that so well. And Jem, who do you think wins the flag? <laughs> the I'd, hardest question. Yeah, of all. I want to hear it. I want to know. <laughs> Other than who? Collingwood. <laughs> and I want to know why. And yeah, it's is it is it Collingwood? I it's really hard, I think, to go past the top three. I think they really separated themselves late in the season. So Adelaide, Brisbane and, and Melbourne. Um, you know, it's uh Brisbane, I'll go with Brisbane. <laughs> I think my tip is is Brisbane as well. Rubes, love you. Love you. Love Collingwood. I'll try not to be offended. <laughs> Gemma, thank you so much for joining us. It's been so great to have you on the show. Uh, you don't go home empty-handed, Gemma. All guests on Women's Footy take home a Samsonite luggage package where there's live sport. Samsonite is there too. For innovative travel and business solutions, visit samsonite.com.au. You're also going to get a Spinal Ease pillow. The best pillow in the world is at spinalease.com. .au. Also, Xena Sport is a valued NAB customer. The Xena Z1 and Youth Vest are a fantastic way to ensure that we are empowering and protecting female athletes of all ages, particularly those who play contact sports. Available today at xenasport.co. And you're also going to get a $50 McCafe gift card. Try the Aussie Angus Burger at Macca's today. Coming up, Scott Forrest from Pillar Products and Emma Carney's thoughts on playing the season in spring. Stick around. I always dreamt of being a professional athlete. My biggest dream was to play AFLW. Um, I didn't really care what team I played for. I sort of just was so driven to make it somehow in the sporting industry. So at the age of 16, I was definitely having conversations with AFLW teams on where I'd see myself in the future. Yeah, unfortunately, I took a turn and decided to play rugby um, before exploring AFL. I signed a contract with the Western Force um, through school. I went to a Catholic school in Perth. I then made the Super W teams. I also made an Aussie Sevens development squad. 
Um, so I was flying to Sydney maybe two weeks a month and just, yeah, was playing every rugby I could get. I did want a long career with rugby, but then unfortunately I broke my leg um, just before going to Colorado with the Australian Sevens and that was a huge setback. Um, and then unfortunately from there I sort of um, tore paths with rugby a little bit. Injury gave me a lot of time to reflect on life choices, where I wanted to be. Um, rugby was still definitely in the picture, hence why I attempted to come back. Unfortunately, it just wasn't for me and mentally and physically, I wasn't at the level I needed to be. Um, I was just lucky to have Ali Anderson and Craig Stasevich knock at my door and constantly message me to drive me and show me some support to get me back to where I needed to be, I guess. In 2018, I nominated for the AFLW draft, even though I was an injured player. I was just lucky enough to have Brisbane Lions pick me up as a rookie draft before the draft happened. Um, it was quite surreal. Um, it just gave me a little bit more confidence knowing that someone was happy to have me on their team even though I'd been away from the game for so long. So leading into round one of my debut season, I didn't know I was going to get selected until the Thursday before playing. So I was quite shocked that I was named in the starting team I didn't expect it, but I was grateful for the opportunity um, and I was definitely going to embrace it and take it in with both hands um, and sort of show them what I can do. I do remember a bit of my first goal. Um, it was against Richmond football team. Um, I think Shannon Campbell had just bombed it in the forward line to me running onto it to an open goal. Um, it was my first touch, so I was scared, I was nervous, I was just lucky that it went through um, the big sticks um, and that sort of boosted my confidence for the rest of the game. Boost through, just throws it on boot in the forward direction. Look at the speed of Hotter, the first game of the X Factor, she's got her first ever goal. Playing in a final series, it didn't hit me until the day we played. I was sort of away with the fairies and didn't really want to think too hard about the upcoming games. Um, yeah, so like I said, it didn't come to me until I was playing. I was like, oh my goodness, you know, this is a final. In, in your first year, you're playing a final in AFLW. How cool is that? So. It was a little shock to the system, but definitely a, an amazing opportunity. Playing um, some big finals in the under 18s tournament definitely set me up um, for success in the AFLW season. To then play a grand final, I was quite relaxed um, and confident that I'd done it before. Yes, there was a bigger crowd, but I sort of was able to feed off their energy um, and I quite like the pressure and the environment that finals footy gives you. Um, yeah, it just gives me the urge or um, edge to sort of do something amazing with my game. I definitely didn't imagine um, that I'd be in a grand final in my first year of AFLW, not only to win it also, yeah, I would guess I was just really, really lucky to have had that opportunity um, so early in my um, professional career. I think once I won the flag, I didn't really consider how long it took me to get to where I was. I was sort of basing my emotions on the now moment, but not too long after the grand final, I had some time to reflect on, hey, it actually took me three to four years to get here. So it was a big moment for me in my career um, and knowing that you got through some of the hardest moments of your life um, to then get to this amazing opportunity um, and win a flag.
Well, welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB. Supporting footballers from NAB AFL Auskick to the big time. Well, Scott Forrest joins us here from Pillar Products today and he's going to award this huge novelty check to the Brisbane Lions for this piece of play against Collingwood that we saw earlier in the year. You can purchase a Pillar Products window film exclusively at Bunnings. Scott, thanks so much for being here with us today and for your sponsorship and support. How important is it for a Pillar Products to be a part of AFL? Oh, it means a lot to us. Um, you know, we love footy and we love uh, being, a, you know, being able to support AFLW and women's footy. And uh, it's great to be part of all of this. Well, thank, thank you very you. much and uh, well done to the Brisbane Lions. And that is a wrap for the analyzer for season 2022. Congratulations to the Brisbane Lions. Pillar Products has you covered inside and out. Shutters, roller blinds, window film, exclusively available at Bunnings. Well, Rubes, let's have a chat now. We talked about it uh, last week as well, really quickly, but I want to delve into it a little bit more. Um, the talk is that it is going to go ahead with the season, the next season, the second 2022 season, uh, starting in August. It's going to be a spring season. How do you feel about it? I spoke about it last week, as you said, um, and I did touch on it then that my heart goes out to the girls who have done ACLs, which there are so many this season, as there are a lot of the seasons, which is frustrating, but um, really exciting for someone like me at my age that it's like, I just get to play footy and my body's pretty good and it's, oh, we get two seasons in one year, but um, really difficult for the girls who, you know, work. I'm in a fortunate position where I'm not working full-time outside of football, but so many teachers and paramedics and um, those sort of occupations that really struggle to move their work around football and have taken time off. It's going to be pretty difficult to get more time off for a season in 12 weeks, you know, after the, this end of season. Yeah, well, this is what North Melbourne captain Emma Carney had to say about playing in spring. It would be remiss of us not to ask you some questions about the news that broke last week that the August start is a possibility for the AFLW. How did you react to that news? Yeah, I mean, I've always been of the opinion that we should be playing in that sort of springtime period. So I was quite relieved. Uh, I was really supportive of the AFL's decision to do that. I do uh, have perspective of other people's um, issues with that, uh, especially if they did start it this this season, given um, the number of ACLs that we had. So it's another year that players will miss. And given the number of players that did it, and then obviously with the expansion, the impact that they that might have on the quality of the game. But I think probably um, more so is the, the players that have taken time off uh, work for this season, thinking that, okay, then I'll have the off season and then I'll play again next year. They've taken leave without pay. Some have moved interstate to play. Um, and now they've got to then have those difficult conversations with employers to say, hey, can I take some more time off? So I certainly understand it from that perspective. But I guess from a playing point of view, certainly playing in those cooler months with a bit more free to air, we're not sort of competing against um, sports like tennis and cricket. Um, it's certainly a great move. All really great points there, Rubes. And your teammate this week, Chloe Malloy, said, fantastic, let's play in spring, but in 2023. Like, is everyone just cooked and do they need to just put it into 2023? Yeah, oh, look, I think playing in summer does cook the body and the hard grounds and uh, particularly Chloe, I was with her yesterday and, um, you know, she, she's done really well to get through the season. She battled niggles really early on um, with a pretty severe back problem. Um, but, you know, coming good at the right end, don't you worry about that? <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm sure she would love a few months to rest and recover, as would so many of the girls, particularly the older players as well, you know, body is not pulling up as well as they used to. But, um, you know, myself, I'm pretty excited about it and the, th the thought of maybe double-heading with some of the men's games. We were meant to do that at the Gabba yeah. um, last night and that was a really exciting prospect for me. But, um, yeah, I guess we'll wait and see. Yeah, it will be interesting to see where this lands. Well, as we head to the break, let's take a look at the AFLW Rising Star nominees from Round 10. Thanks to NAB, supporting footballers from NAB AFL Auskick to the big time.
Welcome back to Women's Footy. Thanks to NAB, it is my absolute pleasure now to welcome the inaugural Essendon AFLW coach, Natalie Wood. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me along. I'm a huge Essendon fan, so this means a lot to me to be interviewing you. Uh, let's talk. You must be absolutely honoured to be announced the coach. Uh, what are your plans for this uh, Essendon side going into the next season? Well, right now, uh, with the AFL looking to bring the season forward to August, obviously nothing's confirmed yet, but uh, we need people in football clubs, so we'll be looking at how we build our program obviously need to look at the playing list and also our staff profile list. So that'll be our first ticket item. And you'll be the fourth woman to be a senior coach at AFL level, uh, followed by, you know, Beck Goddard, Michelle Cowan and Peter Searle. What does this mean to you? And also, what sort of support are you looking to have around you? You just mentioned, obviously, having to fill a panel of coaches. What are you looking for in those coaches? Obviously, um, diversity is really important and that's um, diversity of gender obviously gets spoken about a lot, but, but also diversity of experiences, the way that we think, the natural ways that we like to communicate and, and teach our players. So really want to make sure that we get a, a coaching group that um, complements each other, but also willing to, to challenge each other um, and have some really robust conversations because we need to get the best out of our coaching group and us as a staff to put the best program in place for the players. Robust conversations, I like the sound of that. Uh, Natalie, you also serve as a development coach uh, under uh, Ben Rutten's panel as part of your role. Uh, what do you think you can gain from the Essendon men's side and vice versa? What can you bring to the men's team? Yeah, that, we've had a lot of discussions about that with Ben and also um, Xavier Campbell in terms of making sure that it, it's not just a, a one-way street in terms of um, obviously I've not been a part of a men's program or a full-time uh, football program for, for 20 years like the, a lot of the people in the program. So there's a lot of things that are there for me to learn and pick up on in terms of craft, the way that players respond to different scenarios. But then equally, I've had, you know, in that time that I haven't been in football clubs, I've had a, a really long journey in education. Um, that's given me a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different experiences, um, as well as being able to, to live a life and, and travel. So I bring, um, I guess, a different skill set um, that hopefully, you know, we can find ways that we all benefit from having, you know, diversity within the men's program as well. And your VFLW sides had a really strong start to the season, undefeated with four wins and a draw. How many of your players are you thinking you'll promote up to the AFLW side? Yeah, credit to Essendon um, and everything that's happened, not just this year, but the years prior. They've really built a strong foundation for us to launch into the AFLW. So there's a terrific culture in the VFLW. There's a really strong work ethic. There's players that are taking leaps and bounds forward in their own game and, and putting their best foot forward. That's something that, you know, in terms of uh, how many and who, that's something that, you know, with Georgia Harvey, um, with our list management that we need to look at. Um, obviously, there's different rules around, um, you know, where and how you can get different players. So uh, making sure that we're, we're using players that have grown through Essendon, but as well as finding other players that really complement our list as well. And you're a member of the very famous Darabin uh, Falcons Football Club. What are your, some of your fondest memories? Uh, I think that, um, you know, I, I had a great time at, at Darabin and also Melbourne Uni prior to that. But I guess when you think of, of Darabin, it's, you know, the facilities, you know, weren't great. Everyone will talk about, you know, the, the ground that we used to play on. Um, so what, what was really important with Darabin was the people and the way that we went about, um, you know, the on-field and off-field. So making sure that, you know, bring, bring the really strong elements of that along into AFLW as well. And that's, that's ultimately around culture, Ruby, as, as you would know. If you can develop a really strong culture on and off the field, then we're putting our players in the best position to, to thrive. And, and that's the ultimate goal. And Natalie, just one last question. What can we expect from you as a coach and your coaching style? Are you, are you like the cool, calm and collected or do you like a bit of a spray at halftime? Oh, I definitely um, won't be saying a spray. I'm, I might be having some internal dialogue, but try and have <laughs> um, a filter that goes before um, 
But I guess the, the thing that um, I pride myself on is, is being able to, to really build the capacity of the players. Um, you know, my time at Western Bulldogs and, and Geelong, I'm really grateful for, for both of those programs. And, um, you know, but being able to develop young players um, that are evolving, but, but equally making sure that every single person on the list is, is taking their game to a new level. So working with the more senior players um, and understanding, you know, what the next steps are for them. Sometimes players can um, see what they want to achieve, but, you know, I think one of the strengths that I bring is being able to break that down and, and work out the, the next right step for their player development. That's a, that, that was a great answer. I can see why you got the job there. Thanks for joining us, Natalie. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Great. Thanks for having me, guys. Stick around. More women's footy after this. I started playing footy when I was 18 years old. When I was younger, I did a lot of surf lifesaving at Mentone and then played a lot of basketball at Sandringham. I think basketball definitely often seemed to transition well into footy and then lifesaving is just an incredibly tough sport and you've got to have a lot of grit. I think that definitely helps as well. When I was little, I yeah, never really thought there would be a, a women's league. I didn't think much about footy, didn't know anyone who played footy, any girls, so it wasn't anything I ever really thought about. So my parents are from New Zealand and they never really followed footy and I guess I never did as well. It wasn't really something in my life till I started playing. I had never really watched much footy or, or played much, so I didn't really know the rules, but I think with that there wasn't much pressure. I was just playing for fun. My parents are really proud of my footy. My mum was a good rugby player and dad too, so they're both sporty and really happy for me. My dad definitely lives a bit vicariously through me and they're definitely my number one fans. Mum grew up in New Zealand and she played rugby there and was a really good rugby player. She's really strong and definitely inspires me a lot in my sporting. She was a great athlete and then was super stoked that I was pursuing that as well. So I'm 184 centimetres and I'd be up there as one of the tallest in the league, second tallest in our team. As a ruck, it's a huge advantage. Being tall and, and having a big reach helps as well. I think in, in any elite sport, there's a lot of pressure um, on performance and I think you put a lot of pressure on yourself as well. So I think just focusing on the basics and, and getting around your teammates and really focusing on, on why you love the sport and fun. so just really focusing on the positives. I'm studying environmental engineering and environmental science. I was given the opportunity to do a placement as a site engineer on a project in the city with Lendlease and it's been a really great experience. As an undergraduate, I was a lot of shadowing people, shadowing the foreman and working with the engineers in the office as well and just sort of soaking up what they do and, and learning a lot. Working as a project manager, there's definitely skills that transfer to the footy field, obviously both environments. You're working within a team, so there's communication skills and, and working as a team. Through footy, I just like to keep improving my game. Um, obviously, the ultimate goal is to be one of the best rucks and just keep being the best player I can for my teammates and for the club. Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB. We are here at the McCafe. Try a deluxe iced coffee at McCafe today. We're missing Nadia today, but that's okay. We've got our technical director, Dave, on the brews. Let's see how it goes, Rubes. Yes. Absolutely delicious. Beautiful. Try one of these at the McCafe today. Well, we want to say congratulations to our IMAR Insurance Trade of the Year winner. It's Taylor Harris, IMAR Tradie Insurance, supporting women in trade and women in sport. Visit imar.com.au or call 13IMAR. Uh, she's absolute stars and she, look at it. She does that almost every week, taking a grab like that. And you can really see her confidence throughout this year. I think she's a player that you can tell pretty quickly in her body language, whether she's up or down in the game. And um, this year she's just been so consistent and it's, it's shown with being one of the you know, leading goal scorers. And being on such a, a high quality team as well, she's obviously having the ball delivered to her a lot better this season. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, not even just from the midfielders, but the forwards in the Melbourne forward line, they just look out for each other all the time, you know, led by Daisy Pierce as well. So she's just got some great people around her and she just seems like a happy camper. Yeah, she does seem a lot happier, a lot more relaxed this season and, uh, yeah, just playing some of her best footy. So, Taylor Harris, this is for you. Look at the size of this check. Two and a half grand for you, Taylor. This is all yours. Congratulations. You are the IMAR Insurance Trade of the Year. You won two and a half grand. Thanks to IMAR. Get an online quote and instant cover anywhere, anytime. Visit imar.com.au. You can also contact IMAR by ringing 13IMAR. Well, let's have a look now at the goal of the year, thanks to Underwork Serious About Sport. After some huge goals this year, Rubes, it's impossible to go past Ebony Antonio, stunning winner against the Bulldogs. Have a look at this. She's something pretty special, Ebony Antonio, and, um, you know, she comes out with something like this so often, but... Oh, she, what a player. And she loves it, doesn't you? She does. She absolutely loves it. I played basketball with her back in Perth and much the same in basketball as well. Very passionate and um, really lifts up the people around her. She's absolutely elite. She's, she's taken this on and she's done it early in the season. She's just an absolute champion and I've really, really enjoyed watching her this season. 100%. All right, well, Underworks knows Aussies are serious about sports. That's why they're rewarding grassroots clubs with a new pair of Underworks sports socks for every player. Look at those socks. They're very comfortable, Ooh, aren't they, Rubes? Absolutely. Underworks. Too bad my housemate Sarah Rose steals all mine. So I'm like, <laughs> hey, just send some my way, Underworks. All right, well, Hayley Miller is our snaffle AFL PA MVP of the week with the Frio skipper lifting her side to a famous finals victory on the road. You can cast your vote at aflpa.com.au. Have a look at some of those stats from the game. That is a captain's game in a very important final. That is 21 disposals, six tackles, four marks and a very, very good goal. She, very handy she is goal just there. a driver of that team and, uh, yeah, you'd be pretty happy to have her in your midfield, wouldn't you? Absolutely, I would. Well, that was our nomination for the AFL PA MVP of the week. Thanks to snaffle.com.au. Stick around. There's lots more women's footy to come. Welcome back to Women's Footy for NAB. We're now going to take a look at the Collingwood Brisbane final coming up at some stage this week, hopefully. Rubes, you guys are playing Brisbane. If you win that game, then you're up against Melbourne out at Casey Fields. How are you feeling about it? No secret, pretty tough run to the GF, but I don't think we'd be in this position if we didn't deserve to be in the position. And I think we've proved in the last few weeks of the home and away season that we can put it up against the top teams in the comp and um, really challenge them. So uh, exciting position for us to be in. We're going in as underdogs and we really like that. And you did have, you had a great win against Richmond uh, in the last round of the season. Um, obviously different team, Richmond to Brisbane, but what are the things that you have to keep doing well and what are the things you need to step up into in order to beat Brisbane? We tried to be a little bit too cute with the hands against Richmond and, um, you know, just, you know, handballing around the top of the 50 rather than getting it in there and giving our forwards an opportunity. And Brisbane just won't allow you to do that. Their pressure is too good and they come at you too quickly. So, um, you know, try not to be too cute, get boot on ball, get it into the forwards who can go to work like big Sabrina frederick Trove can there. Hopefully yeah. a few more of those on the weekend. Absolutely. And your forwards really do need to step up and start kicking straight if you are going to beat a team like Brisbane. Yep, you need goals to win a game. Yeah, and, um, yeah, so, you know, we've got a few crafty ones up there, so hopefully so that the young kids can keep stepping up like they have been in previous weeks and hit the scoreboard for us. And when do you think the game is going to be played? Like, obviously, there's some rumours floating around. Do you have an idea of when you're going to get out there? Look, with obviously, it throws out the rest of the finals fixture and um, the following games. But hopefully, uh, uh, maybe Thursday because... And we might have to play on a Sunday game or something like that earlier in the week because we're going to get a short turnaround, whoever wins that, to then play um, a Melbourne possibly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'd say maybe Thursday turnaround to a Sunday. So yeah. a short turnaround, but, um, yeah, well, I don't know any more than you do, really. <laughs> and are you hoping your players who are out with COVID health and safety protocols, are they going to be back in? Are they going to be back up to scratch? Because I know that you were talking as well about um, when you recovered from COVID, it was, you were still in a, in a bit of a fog for a couple of weeks. 
Yeah, so had COVID the week leading into round one and um, was out of isolation about four days before round one against Carlton. And um, it did sort of hit you for six a little bit. Yeah. You definitely didn't feel yourself and a little bit foggy almost. And the game sort of felt like it went par past me a little bit. But um, I know the girls are working out in there and doing what they can when they feel OK. But you do feel for them. Um, you just hope that they come in with confidence more than anything. And... If there's one player from Brisbane that you need to stop uh, when you play them, who is that going to be for you, do you reckon? They've, they've got every part of the field covered. So it's it's hard to nail it down to one player. It's no secret that Emily Bates is an absolute machine in their midfield for them. So um, we'll, we'll work hard to sort of keep her under wraps. But um, we also back ourselves in to play our football. We're not going to determine our type of football on them and stopping them. We want to bring our offensive game as well and try to give it a real crack. And has Stephen Simons changed anything this week for you guys? Like, what is the game plan going in? Well, I can't tell you that. <laughs> there might be Brisbane players Bruce, watching. Give us a hint. Come on. Oh, look, What's the game plan? Much like I just said, uh, you know, the type of footy that we played against at Adelaide, they're similar teams, high pressure. You need to be really clean. So if we can match them in that pressure and try and be clean with our skills on the outside, then we'll be in pretty good stead. And how's um, Lambert pulled up? Uh, after being uh, hit last week. Is she doing all right? No, she's good. She's a tough one, Choppy. Um, choppy. She, choppy. Lamb Jamie chops. Lamb Chops. Um, you know, she, she's always tough as nails and I um, think she was a little bit sore the first training after, but, um, you know, back flying, so. Awesome. Well, that is pretty much all we've got time for on Women's Footy today. I've had such an incredible time this season hosting the show. I want to thank all of our guests that we've had on the show. I want to thank all of our co-hosts. We've had Libby Birch, Ash Brazel, Mon Conti and Ruby Schlickalaka. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on here, Rubes. Thank you for having me, mate. I've enjoyed it so much. Who's going to win the grand final? Uh, the Hot Pies. The Hot, the hot pies. pies all the way. The underdogs. Excellent. I'm going to give a little tip for uh, Adelaide. I think it's going to be Adelaide-Brisbane again. Oh, that hurts me not to put Melbourne in there, but absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for watching Women's Footy. We're going to catch you next season. See you later.